Hi folks, it's Dr. Rob Sivis and we are in the midst of a series of uh, five or six different videos that are going to be sequential talking about inflammation versus the way the current world looks at markers of inflammation. The current world is heavily focused on treating with medication the markers of inflammation. So if you think about it this way, if there's a flashing red light that says, hey, there's a hole in the road. If you use a whole bunch of ways to switch that light off, not only have you not fixed the hole in the road, you're also kumbaya, there's no flashing red light, and you're unaware of the hole in the road. And that is why I rail, that is why I am so evangelically obsessed with the anti-drug, anti-let's target this number because we don't understand the process, thought process. And, and one of the things that forever the pharma world and cardiologists and lipidologists have been trying to deal with is lowering LDL numbers. Lowering LDL. And they're very effective at doing that. They're statins and things that do that. However, the assumption that they made originally, and this was fostered by pharma, is that LDL, correlates di LDL level correlates directly with cardiovascular plaque atherosclerotic plaque heart disease. And the problem is that over the last 20 to 30 years, there's more and more evidence that proves that there is no correlation between LDL number and, uh, um, and cardiovascular disease. There are people with very high numbers that have no cardiovascular disease. There are people with very high numbers that have high levels of cardiovascular disease. There are people with low numbers that have no cardiovascular, well, not really true, but people with low numbers, they then expect that it's going to be associated with lower levels of cardiovascular disease. Because if all you see are people with cardiovascular disease and you see a high LDL, you're going to make that assumption. Because guess what? People with, like myself with high LDL and a zero CAC score don't go to see the cardiologist because we don't have heart disease. So all they see is what they see, but they don't see the other. Just like in the old days, on the smoking days, oh, all these people with their heart, with their vessels clogged up with uh, fat, it must be the fat that's causing that. Because all they saw in terms of people having heart attacks and strokes was fat in their blood vessels. And they didn't make the association that the smoking was the issue. Because when you do autopsies on people that didn't smoke, they didn't have, blood, they didn't have the, the plaque in their blood vessels. But if all you saw was a bunch of plaque in blood vessels in groups of people that had heart attacks, you can assume that the fat caused the heart attack. Instead of saying, what else were these people doing? They were smoking. And in exactly the same way, that is why the LDL does not correlate with cardiovascular disease. So, but we've got a drug that lowers LDL and we've got to sell this drug called a statin and cholesterol lowering medications. So now we've got to find another marker that more closely correlates with cardiovascular disease. And they've done this search. And if, if you're going to have NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance, they've done by, they're going to look at all these markers and ratios to find something to put you on a statin. <clears throat> and yet there's no measure of inflammation, which is the root cause of the cardiovascular disease, inflammation of any kind, whether it comes from autoimmune disease like lupus, whether it comes from nicotine, whether it comes from elevated carbohydrates, it's the inflammation that's the problem, but they ignore that, they don't understand that, or they choose to ignore it. And one of the molecules that they focused very heavily on, folks, to try to refine, okay, okay, let's see, let's see if you've got the problem, is a molecule called ApoB, ApoB100. So they measure these ApoB levels. And the next video, we're going to talk about an even more focused number, an even more uh, focused number, which is um, the LP little a, lipoprotein A. That's the next video. But let's talk about ApoB. So what is ApoB? It's a protein. It's a zip code protein that gets embedded by the liver, produced by the liver, gets embedded in this membrane called a lipoprotein. And the originating lipoprotein from the liver is called very low density lipoprotein, VLDL. And it's a molecule of single layer fatty acids with a water, a hydro, hydrophilic outside and a, lipopho a lipophilic 
inside. So it likes fat on the inside, it likes water on the outside, so it can travel in the bloodstream. It's a transport molecule, okay? Um, so the transport molecule requires a zip code. And the zip code for the transport molecule VLDL, made by the liver, is called the ApoB100 protein. So it gets placed in the VLDL, and the liver then releases that VLDL into the bloodstream, and VLDL typically goes to fat cells. So the, the zip code is fat cells. Okay. Now, VLDL can either be big and fluffy, filled with fat that was produced by the liver, transporting fat from the liver to the fat cells, or it can be tiny and empty because it's going to the fat cells as a recipient of fat to bring back to the body, to bring back to the liver. So the size of the VLDL matters, but the ApoB100 molecule is produced by the liver in the VLDL, and off it goes out to the fat cells. And then that VLDL docks to the fat cells with that lipoprotein, receptors for that lipoprotein, and what the VLDL molecule does is either dumps triglycerides, fatty acids, and cholesterol in the fat cell for storage, if the traffic is liver to fat cells, or the little small dense VLDLs pick up fat, pick up triglycerides, pick up stored vitamin D, pick up three omega fatty acids from the fat cells. So the small VLDL becomes this bigger molecule, still with the APO100 uh, uh, marker, but now that lipoprotein has changed its name. Now it's called LDL, actually IDL, but let's think of it as LDL, low-density lipoprotein. And off that goes into the blood system. And LDL's job is to transport lipids, ideally picked up from the fat cells, to the liver and to the, to the cells of the body for use as a fuel source, fatty acids and ketones made by the liver. However, that LDL molecule contains the ApoB100 molecule, protein. And there are receptors in a variety of different places that need cholesterol triglycerides. They need those. And there are two sources of need. The healthy source of need is as a source of energy. So if that LDL molecule is big and fluffy and filled with triglycerides and filled with cholesterol, that fat is an energy supply that has to be supplied to the liver for production of ketones and to the cells for triglycerides and fat. And there's a low level, relative low ratio of ApoB100 in the big fluffy LDL, even if you've got a lot of them. So that traffic is back to the liver cells. And also, there is an absence or a decrease in ApoB100 receptors elsewhere in the body. So the primary in a healthy state, the primary, which is in a low inflammatory state, the primary recipient of that LDL is the liver and cells using fat for energy and cholesterol for cellular repair, such as the brain. Now, there's a second system that has a receptor for the ApoB100 molecule. And those are macrophages activated macrophages, when the macrophages who are immune cells get activated, and they say, oh, we've got a fire here. It's like calling for help. It's like that, that single fireman saying, oh my God, we've got a big fire. Bring more help, bring more help. Activated inflammatory cascade, and the macrophage expresses receptors for the ApoB100 molecule. So now the LDL comes, da, 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 floating by, and the macrophage says, dude, we need you. We need you, we need you. And the ApoB100 docks with the macrophage and the LDL dumps cholesterol and fat. Think of foam on a fire. Fireman's standing there and a truck comes on and it's a big foam fire, a foam truck, a water truck, and it dumps all that foam on the fire to protect the inflammation. And that is where the ApoB100 is the zip code to those macrophages, and they express that receptor, they dock to the, to the blood vessel that's inflamed, that's on fire, and they dump their load. 
And that load stays behind trying to seal up that fire, like the foam on a fire. And we call that pluck. And as that pluck builds up, it can cause heart attacks, can break off and cause strokes. So the lipidologists and the cardiologists say, okay, let's measure the ApoB100 number. And they've got a test where they can look for that, for that protein, that lipoprotein, and they can measure it. And they've now created all these formulas where the higher your ApoB100 molecule is, especially if the LDL is small, they can say, okay, that is correlates with a higher risk of a heart attack or a stroke. But it's the body doing its job to heal you. It's trying to fix the problem. So now they can target that person. They can target that person with statins to lower LDL number, to lower cholesterol, to take away the foam that's putting the fire out, hoping and praying that there's less fire. That's what they do with Apple B. So when they say, oh, your Apple B levels are high, you need to be on a statin, it's a more refined way of looking at LDL, at pro-inflammatory LDL. But the inflammatory LDL is reacting to the fire. And if you dumb it down, if you treat it, you're not fixing the fire. You're just dumbing down the response system. And yes, the response system can be more aggressive than the fire itself. But if you put out the fire, then the apple B doesn't matter. And the harm of correcting apple B affects the entire body system. Because that system is in play for real inflammation, for real insults into the body. But if you're insulting yourself, then that system can get out of hand and be a problem. But there are better markers, better ways to deal with that inflammation. So looking at apple B100 and, oh, your apple B levels are high, you must be on a statin because... It's a correlation, it's an association, it is not causal. The Apple B100 doesn't cause the plaque. It's the inflammation that does. And it's an important concept to understand. And if you look at the molecule we talked about in the last, in the last uh, um, section, HDL, there's no medication for HDL. There are statins that are lower LDL, lower Apple B numbers. But there's no drug that raises HDL. So in fact, the things that you can do to help you with a pro-inflammatory environment is to eat less carbohydrates, to be on a low-carbohydrate diet. Magnesium, magnesium glycinate helps. Avocados help. Three omega fatty acids, the anti-inflammatory polyunsaturated fatty acids that we get in fish oil, helps. Fibrate, niacin, B3, they may help a little bit early on. But ultimately, it is not getting a bunch of seed oils and a bunch of carbohydrates from your gut that makes the biggest difference. And it's about decreasing inflammation, not dumbing down the system that's responding to inflammation. So be very, very cautious about doctors who focus, oh, we're not going to look at, at, at LDL. We're going to look at the Apple B100 molecules. Be very, very cautious about those docs. Because yes, it correlates with CVD, but it doesn't fix the problem. And it doesn't treat the bad diet that caused the problem. It is not a good measure. Now, here's the other piece. Here's the paradox. Because when you're on a low-carbohydrate diet, wonderful, so many things get better. But one thing rises. And that is your LDL level. It rises. So the paradox is, your APO B100 level is actually going to increase when you're on a low-carbohydrate anti-inflammatory diet. And they're going to go ballistic with that and say, oh, you must be on a statin, your APO B100. But that is because LDL is transporting fat, the big fluffy LDLs is transporting fat from the fat cells back to my body for use. It's the healthiest state you can be in. So when you've got tiny, dense LDL molecules that are uh, empty because you're living on sugar and you, you, the sugar causes the inflammation and that's dumping cholesterol in plaque. That's a bad situation. But if you've got exactly the same molecule, exactly the same high numbers of LDLs, high numbers of ApoB, but you've got big, fluffy, healthy molecules, the numbers look exactly the same. 
And that's the confusion. And they will put both of those populations on statins, even though this one has a high risk of cardiovascular disease and the statin doesn't help because it's not fixing the fire. And these people don't have the fire and they need the high levels of LDL. So the statin is going to cause you great harm without benefit. And they don't get that because they look at one number instead of separating the two. And your HDL levels, your VLDL levels, if your VLDL level is, high, is low, your HDL is high, then you want your LDL to be high. And it will be high. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. But if your HDL level is low, if your VLDL is big and fluffy and high, and your LDL is high, that's a bad problem to have. But fixing those numbers doesn't fix the inflammation. Be smarter than your doctor. Understand the difference. Don't just look at one number, the APOB or the LDL level. Look at the other ones that are associated. Is this healthy LDL or is it unhealthy LDL? And if it's unhealthy LDL, fixing the LDL doesn't happen. Fix the inflammation. I hope, I know this is difficult to understand. I hope I can simplify it to the point of clarity. But when I read numbers, if you come to me and we look at your blood work, I'm going to read it in the context of how much inflammation do you have? And how healthy is my lipid transport system? Is it being used for fuel and energy and rebuilding cells? Or is it being used to put out fires and for inflammation? And then let's get rid of the inflammation. And there are much, much better earlier functional medications, if you have to, that treat the inflammation. And there are ways to increase and to alter that inflammatory response. So if you're interested, set up a visit and we can review the numbers in that context without getting histrionic about one number that is high. We want to separate those numbers into two things. Is it associated with health? Is it associated with harm? And how do we convert the harm to health? That's what we do for a living. But APOB100, APOB numbers are just a more refined way of confusing themselves. Okay, so you're a little bit confused with LDL. Now you're even more confused with ApoB. Because ApoB will be high in both systems. The next talk is going to be the current one that they are hopelessly screwed up with. But it's the one that they're scaring the crap out of their patients with. And we're going to talk about that next. So watch the next video, folks.